One of the greatest features in High Level is the ability of creating snapshots. Think of snapshots as the templates that carry your emails, your funnels, your automations, everything that you could possibly imagine under one roof that you can easily share with other individuals like your customers or other people inside your agency and so forth. And today we're going to show you how to create, share, and install these snapshots. So stay tuned and build along with us. So let's talk about the first part, which is the actual creation of a snapshot. Now, we're going to give you some best practices and things that we've learned over time. And we're going to show you how we create the snapshots, how we kind of name them, and we make sure it's less confusing for the customers. Now, the most important part of the snapshot is making sure that you're making it incredibly easy for the other individuals to ensure that they know how to install. So I can tell you from experience that even though the snapshot might be easy, meaning all the things you created, the funnels, the automations, and like the calendars make sense to you. Sometimes it's going to be really hard for the customer to kind of understand or the person you're sharing with understand like exactly what's going on. So I can tell you, you're going to always need like a little video or a, like an SOP or written instructions of exactly how they need to go in there and modify it so they can make it live and make it functional. I've seen a lot of people create snapshots without any directions and they fail miserably. And that's one of the biggest issues we see out there. So to start off with, I'm going to take you to the common snapshot that we have. We call it the core snapshot. So I'm going to take you to our snapshot to show you exactly how we do it. So there's no confusion in the process that we have. All right. Well, so when we first get into the snapshot, let me tell you some of the things that we usually provide and what we do in order to make it really simple for the customer. So one, you're going to notice that everything we do inside our CRM and in our snapshot to be provided is we number them. We number them and we make sure that the naming conventions make sense. Meaning whatever we name the folder, the automations, that it does exactly what the automation is doing. And we try to number the things the same. So whether it's a form, whether it's a funnel, whether it's a folder and whether it's automations that they all go to the one thing that it's trying to do that way there's no confusion so for instance in this case we're going to show you the lead magnet so for instance our lead magnet funnel is has a number of zero one folder for the automations has a number of zero one the form for the automation has a number of zero one like that i can easily tell the person when you're creating this lead magnet here's the form here's the automations and here's the funnel that go with that in particular now i can tell you that custom values happen to be one of the most confusing parts that people don't understand. So that you also want to make sure in your written your instructions, you have the exact way of what they need to do. So for instance, let me kind of cover what I mean. So when you first log in, right, we're going to start first with our opportunities and you're going to see that our opportunities are first pipeline, which is the way that person is going to see, you know, the leads and everything else coming in. You're going to notice the number zero one, the lead magnet. And it's a simple one, right? Somebody downloads your lead magnet, they come in here. Then we have an option of book an appointment following up or, if it's won or lost, meaning you book the sale, you close on a sale and everything else. Super simple, but we start here. Secondly, we go into the marketing area and we go to funnels and you're going to notice that we have our lead magnet, zero one. Lead magnet has five steps of everything they're going to need. And you're going to notice that even our templates inside of our lead magnet are incredibly simple, right? Like add your logo here. It's got some blank text that they can add or replace. It's got the form already embedded inside of the actual lead magnet page. It's got a place for an image and so forth and so on. And all they have to do is kindly replace. You're also going to notice that some of these things like our term and conditions, if you hover over it, we've already installed because we want to make sure we're compliant, a link that goes to the terms and service custom value. So it's very important for you to understand that if you do have custom values, that you go over exactly what people need to do to fill them out. Now, some people are more advanced. They put custom values throughout all of this. You can do that too, where you can have a custom value for the headline, a custom value for this. But I can tell you from experience, if you do not have a very solid instructions or videos on how to do this, most people will get lost and they won't know what to do. Same thing with the logo. If you have a custom value, Values, just getting them to understand that the logo is got to go in a custom value. You got to get the address and everything else becomes incredibly confusing. So when you're first starting out, you might not want to do that just because it gets incredibly hard. Now, with that all being said, you see that I have the pipeline. I have that all numbered. I have the form that I have already created, but let me show you how the form looks. The form is going to come over here. And if I go over to forms and I go to builder, you're going to notice that also it's got zero one lead magnet because that's the form I'm going to use. Now that's all said. And then if you go to the automations, guess what? Along with some other automations that we provide, like the basic ones, you're going to see they're all numbered. They all have a purpose. Some of them are off, but the text messages and unsubscribe process, we leave them on because everybody needs to have that no matter what. And you got to make sure that they have a good one. Now, for instance, if they want to do the lead magnet, 
Here is the complete thing. It's completely off. And all they got to do is replace the names on the brackets. Again, trying to make it incredibly simple for them to do with instructions on what they need to do as far as everything inside the automation. Now you're done with that. And you're also going to notice that even calendars, you come and you can pre-create the calendar, which we did, which is a complimentary strategy session that goes with the lead magnet. Again, the main purpose is somebody downloads your lead magnet and you're immediately pushing them to a phone call. But you're going to notice that the calendar's in here. Now I can tell you from experience, whenever you upload the snapshot or somebody takes it and uploads it to their system, some things will come unattached. The tag system, usually the tags sometimes become this unattached. And also your calendars are going to come in here and they're going to be in draft status because all calendars, especially the round robin, which we prefer, will come in here and they won't have a team member selected. Hence it being in draft. Plus the hours are going to change depending on who it is. So you can come in here and validate that. So if you are sharing a snapshot that has a bunch of calendars, just always remember that you're going to have to instruct the customer that they're in draft and they're going to have to put them on. Now, that being said, right? You're like, well, how do I create one of the first space? This is like, again, the basics on what you want to do. The way we do it is we go in and we create an account strictly for that snapshot, meaning it doesn't have anybody in it. You know, only you, the creator are going in there and you're taking maybe the best things that you've seen in other ones of your creations, like your best funnels or whatever. And you're putting it together in a small package to go after a really tight niche, or you're making it in general for all your customers. Either way, the best way that we've found is that we create the snapshot in a blank account, we add all the things, we perfect it, we make it nice so it's presentable to the customer, and then we record it and we put it in folders. Now you could see as we kind of go through, we have several different ones. We have a dental one, we have our core, and each one is specific to the person that we were going after, right? So that's the way we personally do it. It also makes it very easy to update, just in case you want to have a major update. And also if you wanted to like kind of organize so you have it for other people. Now, the other thing that I mentioned inside the snapshot that I didn't cover is custom values and trigger links. So if you come in here and you go to settings, you go to custom values, we always have a set of custom values that we are using for the business. Now notice I didn't number these because there's only a few, but probably after this training, I'm probably going to go back and do that. But you notice that I have all the things that I have on here that I'm going to leverage with the customer. Now, that being said, this thing is prepped and ready to go. This is a blank account that I've created from absolute scratch. And I'm not going to go over all of that because that's what our old previous videos will go over, how to create a funnel, how to create automations and all that. And I'm trying to keep this video short so you guys can take this and immediately start creating your snapshots. And also our course goes over this in detail because our course is completely devoted of like how to create the best snapshots and deliver the best kind of service for your customer. And you can always check that out on the link below or download one of the lead magnets and it's going to take you to our course offering a couple days later, right? So that being said, right, you got your custom values, you got your pipeline, you got your funnels, you got your automations and everything else. Now, the things that will not transfer over are values inside of your custom values and also any products. So basically anything you fill in here, it's not going to come over to whenever you transfer the account. So you need to have it here and you need to have it blank. So then when they do download this particular thing, they can go back in here and modify it for their particular business. So I just want to make sure you understand that. Same thing with tags. The tags come in. You can always come into the tags and we give them preliminary tags like lead magnet with the colon lead magnet name. Obviously that's not the name of the lead magnet, but you can come in here in the tags, hit the edit button. And now anything in brackets, that's the way we usually call it. Anything in brackets, you change. All right. Same thing with emails and custom values. The emails will come in, but you're going to want to go in and assign users, do all those different things. But again, it's got to be part of your instructions. So create the snapshot in a blank account, you know, and then name it. So it's easily fine. Like for instance, ours is we're rapid active marketing. That's our agency name. And the core snapshot is the snapshot in question. If it's a dental snapshot, I'll say Ram dental snapshot and so forth and so on. Now that I'm ready to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my agency view inside my agency view. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go to account snapshots. Now, if I come in here, you're going to see all my snapshots. Notice they're all say Ram. And these are all the different ones we've created over time. But I was working on the core snapshot and make believe like I want to create the snapshot from scratch. Well, remember, I created an account specifically for that course. So what I can come in here and do is I can hit create snapshot. I'm going to name it again. My naming convention is the RAM, which is my abbreviation for that. This is also what the customer is going to see when they download the snapshot. It's going to have the name associated with it. So again, you want to make it very specific. We put in core snapshot. Okay. And it's immediately going to ask which account. So because I need the snapshot and the account the same, guess what? This becomes incredibly easy to find because there's a core snapshot. And all I have to do is hit save. And now you have snapshot altogether. But make believe, right, I wanted to just update the actual snapshot. Well, I can come in here 
I could search for core, all right? It's gonna pull up the ones that say core in here. Once I get in here and I want it to update, I can go ahead and refresh the snapshot. When I hit that refresh button, what will happen is any updates that have been done it will actually automate and kind of like bring all those updates up to life. I usually do that every time just in case myself or my partner are working on the snapshots before I share it again because I want to make sure that people have the most up-to-date dates, right? The next one is going to be when you want to push updates to all of your individuals that have the core snapshot. Now, big warning here, and I want to make sure you guys take some time to really understand. So if you're multitasking or doing anything else right now, pay attention to this. If somebody has downloaded their core snapshot inside of your CRM and you push the update, what will happen is if they didn't take or make a copy of the templates, which we recommend to doing in our instructions, if you push that update to their account and you made any changes in the funnels or the automations, you will override whatever they created, which can cause a significant problem. When we add an update that we believe is going to be hitting the emails or the funnels or anything that the customers already adapted or built to, we will create like a version two and add it. And then when we push the update, you're going to see what happens. We can, let's say, I'm just going to do this test account and I'm going to hit proceed. It's going to ask, well, what do you want to update? And we will go in and we will just pick, okay, well, we just want to update the A2P compliance funnel. And that's all we want to do. So the second we hit that and we go to update it, it will only update that to the current customers inside your software that have that. And then you want to make sure you open up your conflicts to ensure you're not overriding anything that might have an impact on their work that they've already previous done. Again, we had to learn this the hard way. We pushed an update once to hundred accounts. We destroyed half the people's accounts and it was a really big deal. So I want to make sure you don't make the same mistakes we did because again, that was a really hard lesson that we had to learn and it was not cool, but you can do it. You can do it very individually. If you have different forms, again, just create a V2. So for instance, it'll be say lead magnet form. And then your second one, because you wanted to update something would be lead magnet form V2. And then you would just send an email to anybody that's got your snapshot. Hey, we've updated. Here's the latest model. Here are the things that we changed please make sure you update your form to v2 something like that or funnel here's a different choice for your funnel if you've already worked on your funnel please ignore if you haven't started yet please use v2 very simple not going to overly complicated but that's something you want to make sure you do right that being said let's go ahead and share the actual snapshot right so there's a couple of different caveats of how you can share and this is actually pretty cool if you come in here you have the ability of copying the snapshot id which you're going to need later on at some point if you're going to go back and you just want to do some kind of maintenance or so forth if you want to edit the snapshot you come in here and it says well i want to edit the snapshot name you can do version numbers and everything else if you want to keep your old versions and your new we honestly we don't keep the old ones that's the whole point of going to something new we're now creating an advanced core snapshot that's going to be for our uh, clients and our majority bigger clients that's going to be a little bit more advanced than some of the cool things that we're trying to do but for instance i would just create another snapshot and i would call it enhanced core snapshot and so forth and so on keeping version tracking number is cool and all but it could get a little tedious the next thing is if you come in here and you actually want to share it there are different sharing methods let's talk about the different share types now the get one time share link is like you're just sharing it with one individual person and you just want to share with them and kind of like that's it you want the link to disappear Super easy, not overly complicated. Email share link, you can actually put a bunch of emails per line if you wanted to share it with a group of people and it automatically will send a link out. Get a permanent link, which just means that if you have like a membership site and you want all the members to download this particular snapshot, that's the link to use. All right, and then you have agency restricted link. This is pretty cool. This is for your agency relationship number. So for instance, let's make believe you had a partnership with a different agency, but you don't want them like sharing the snapshot with anybody else. A little bit of security. I wouldn't say just a lot of security because people can always copy the snapshot and then send it out. But what you could do is, you could come in here and if you want to find your agency number, you just go to need help and your agency number and relationship number is located right here. You can copy it, come back over here. Like, you know, you would get whatever other person's agency number is. And then when you share it at the agency level, they'll be able to share it with their people. And honestly, we have some relationships like that with other agencies and that's how we do it. So we come in here and we go to the core snapshot. Again, let's hit that share. And now that I have the agency restricted link, I can come over here. I can paste it. Boom. Once I paste it, I hit get link and it'll be very specific to that agency. And if that agency tries to share it with another agency, it won't allow it to do it. So pretty cool feature. Again, there's ways to work around it, but better than nothing in my opinion, right? Now, the next one is a sub account restricted link. Again, you can come in here if you have a particular sub account. And if you don't know how to get the sub account ID, let me just show you how to do that. If I went into any of the sub accounts and I have my browser, which I have my browser showing right here, what you're going to do is there is a little bit of a secret trick, super easy. There's two ways to get it, but I'm just going to show you the easy way inside of here. When you get into the sub account, you're going to notice that it has location up here and this is going to be blurred out, but right after the location forward slash is the actual sub account ID. 
you copy that. And then when you share that, same like it did with the agency, that's the one you have it there, right? And that's pretty much it. So you would copy it right there and then you would go ahead and just like put in all the location IDs that you want to have that particular sub account. The reason is because maybe they want to install it themselves, whatever the reason is. I haven't really found a reason for it, but high level created it. So there must be a use case out there that somebody's leveraging for it, right? So there you go. That takes care of that. But what happens if you have to actually install the snapshot, right? So when you install the snapshot, here's some of the best practices that we recommend. So there's two parts of it. The first part of it is you have to download it through the agency side. So if you're not an agency owner and you're not owning the SaaS version of high level, you have to email their support to get that snapshot loaded into your account. And you have to make sure that they agree it. Again, everybody has different rules, but that's the general purpose, right? You are going to get a permanent link. So again, if I'm the person providing the snapshot, I'm going to come over here to the core. I'm going to hit share snapshot. I'm going to get a one-time share link. I'm going to hit get link. Again, this will only work one time and it'll stop working. I'm going to copy that link. All right. And what's going to happen is depending on what you're logged into, like what version of high level you're logged into, you're going to come into a high level screen. Now, when you come in here, I'm going to go ahead and hit paste and I'm going to hit enter. It will bring you down to this screen, which freaks most people out. Now, the most important thing to do is just explain to a customer that this is going to happen. When they see this, all they literally have to do is come in here and hit member login or I'm already a high level user. Now, if they're not a high level user, this does have a referral key, but sometimes we know it doesn't work. So we were giving away for this forever and it like sometimes we wouldn't get credit. But anyway, long story short, you're going to go in here. If they're already members hit, I am already a high level user or member login. But remember, they might not know they're a high level user because they're using a white label version of high level. But if they are just again, you're going to tell them, hey, if you're under a white label version of high level, just make sure that you send this to their support and support will upload this to the agency which again, can be a problematic for you because then the agency now has access to it. But again, this is what you're getting into when you're doing the snapshots. You're going to come into member login and it's going to ask you to log into a variation of high level again, because we have so many, it's going to show a whole list of things to do. Okay. So let's go ahead and log in. All right. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick my own again. I'm going to send a security code and you're going to come into the screen on the agency side level. I'm going to go ahead. Yes. Import now. And it will import the snapshot and we'll go under my imported snapshots. As you can see, it's right here and it gives you the date and it goes by name. Now, if I want to install that anywhere inside the system, again, I have to be at the agency side. I'll have to go to sub accounts. I'm going to find my account, right? And I already have it installed, but I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to find my account. Boom. We'll just go to this one right here. And then from here, you're going to go to the right hand side, hit actions, load snapshot, and you're going to select all the snapshots you imported. So for instance, here are all my imported snapshots. And I'll go to my core that I just went in, right? So let's see, RAM core, beautiful. I hit proceed. Now, when I proceed, I can choose, pick and choose what I want to put in here. I usually do this. I go through and I'm like, wait a second. I don't want that overwritten. This is cool, but I have my own templates. I don't know what this is. And I just make sure that when I go through it, I go through and it's everything that I want. Now, this looks like it's everything that I want. I'm going to hit proceed. And then here, here's where it checks for any kind of conflicts. Now, you have a choice in conflicts. If there's something that's conflicting, you can either skip it or you can override it. And that's kind of the main thing. And then all you got to do is hit proceed and it automatically installs. We're obviously going to cancel now because we don't want to do this. But that is it. You can totally make a business out of this selling snapshots to individuals. You can create these for people inside of your audiences. We have close to like 50 snapshots that we use for a variety of niches and customers that we support. It makes our job tremendously easier. And at the same time, it really creates a great customer experience. So hope you enjoyed this one. Hope we give you some insight and we'll see you in the next one.